Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we talked about Listeria monocytogenes when it comes to its characteristics and pathogenesis. We learned about the actin rockets, the phospholipase C, the listeriolysin, etc. Today, we'll focus on the disease, the clinical aspect known as listeriosis, a condition caused by listeria. By the way, listeriosis could be flu-like symptoms, watery diarrhea, meningoencephalitis in the neonates, as well as granulomatosis infantiseptica. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. We talked about the gram-positive cocci before. As per listeria monocytogenes, it's a gram-positive rod. It's a gram-positive rod that is non-spore forming and aerobic and motile. Why do we call it Listeria? It's named after Joseph Lister and monocytogenes because you find lots of monocytes when Listeria infects rabbits. The characteristics of Listeria monocytogenes was discussed in the previous video. Just remember, it can grow and multiply at a wide range of temperature, from cold to warm. It can grow in a refrigerator. The longer you refrigerate your food, the greater the chance of replication because the bacteria is surviving in your fridge for a longer period of time. The pathogenesis was also the topic of the last video. Quick review, Listeria will adhere to your cell. How come? Listeria has internalin A and your cell has e cadherin for adhesion. And if it ends in IN, it's usually a protein. But hey, medicosis, how about heparin? Heparin is an exception. Listeria will enter into your cell, then your phagolysosome will engulf it. But since your intracellular fluid is naturally acidic, Listeria will activate its listeriolysin, which is a cytolysin, and phospholipase C. Listeriolysin, which is a cytolysin, will lysis your cell, and phospholipase C will break down your phospholipid membranes, including the membrane of the phagolysosome, liberating the listeria from the tyranny of your phagolysosome. Now listeria is free to swim inside your cell, thanks to Act A, which assembles your actin. These are the actin rockets. Listeria can also pushes and propels itself from one cell to the next cell. Salt is not gonna kill me. Cold temperature is not gonna kill me, said Listeria monocytogenes. I can survive refrigeration if you did not boil your food, if you did not cook it properly and thoroughly, I can grow in your food. And I cause many diseases, collectively known as listeriosis, in adults, flu-like symptoms, plus or minus gastroenteritis, in form of watery diarrhea, mainly. Pregnant women, also flu-like illness. Neonates, now that's the severe one. Granulomatosis infantiseptica, which can lead to miscarriages or stillbirth or premature birth. Infantiseptica, sepsis, because of a bacterial infection, spread of the infection into the bloodstream. Infanti, because it's an infant, granulomatosis, because we have many granulomas. Let's elaborate. Many people carry listeria naturally in their GI tract. This is called asymptomatic carriage. Listeriosis is one of the causes of foodborne epidemics, food poisoning in the community. Why? Because we did drink unpasteurized raw milk. Soft cheese made of raw, unpasteurized milk, undercooked or microwaved processed food or non-processed food, especially beef, turkey, chicken, and cold cuts because Listeria can survive in the refrigerator. What does the refrigerator of every restaurant contain? Lots of vegetables and they keep it there for a long time. And they brag about how cool the refrigeration system is, and that's the exact point. Especially with cabbage and lettuce. So adults flu-like illness, plus or minus gastroenteritis in form of watery diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, etc. Pregnant women, flu-like illness. When exactly? Third trimester of pregnancy. Why? Because this part of the pregnancy has the weakest T cell immunity and you need your T lymphocytes cellular immunity to kick listeria in the nuts or in the actin rocket I should say. Kick it in the rod or bacillus. 
Neonates, early disease, late disease, early, acquired via vertical transmission in utero before birth. And this can lead to granulomatosis infantiseptica, tons of granulomas, tons of sepsis, abscesses all over the body of the embryo or fetus which can lead to miscarriages, stillbirth, and premature birth. Now, premature birth is easy to understand. A baby is born prematurely. Now, I want you to tell me in the comment section what's the difference between spontaneous abortion and stillbirth. Comment below, please. Neonatal listeriosis can also happen later, and this is acquired during birth or shortly after birth. What do you mean by shortly? It's two to three weeks after birth after labor and delivery. And this disease will have meningitis or meningoencephalitis. Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges that are not part of the brain, but they surround the brain. Encephalitis, on the other hand, is inflammation of the actual brain substance. Meningoencephalitis is both of them added together. Septicemia can also happen, where you have a septic focus in the blood, or I should say multiple foci or foci. So who is vulnerable to listeriosis? The young, the old, the pregnant, and the immunocompromised, because you need robust T cell immunity to kick the listeria in the cytogenes. Medicosis pearls for the pros. It is your T cell immunity, hashtag cellular or cell mediated immunity, and not your B cell immunity, hashtag not the hemoral immunity, i.e. not your antibodies, that defend your body against listeriosis. The T goes with the T. And therefore, we will conclude two facts from this premise. Fact number one, listeriosis. When it affects pregnant women, it's going to be in the third trimester. Why the third trimester? Because that's when their T cell immunity or cellular immunity is the weakest. Fact number two, patients who suffer from defective T cell immunity or cellular immunity or cell mediated immunity or problematic T lymphocytes are vulnerable to listeria infections. Who are these people who have deficiency or defect in their T cell immunity? Could be a patient taking immunosuppressives, such as a patient taking steroids, cyclosporin, netalizumab, adalimumab, infleximab, etanercept, etc. A patient with acquired or a patient with congenital. Acquired what? Acquired immunodeficiency syndrome because it affects T lymphocytes or congenital T cell deficiency. If you want more pearls in pharmacology, check out my antibiotics course, which will teach you about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications by downloading it from medicosisperfectionedis.com. You can also get my surgery high yields course and my emergency medicine high yields course. We're talking about tons of content. To be continued, please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.